Hey guys, welcome back to Talking Blues. Welcome back to another video. We hope you're all doing well today. We're your hosts, Ben and Mark. Before we get into this video, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn the notification bell on, and also do not forget to share this video with your friends, your family, your your uncle, your auntie, whoever you've got, share it. Because we are get we are trying to build the Talking Blues army and the Chelsea fan army. And this is going to be massive. We are massive. We are going to be massive. So let's try and build this the Talking Blues Army and the Chelsea Fan Army, guys. Share it out as much as you can. It really helps us out. We really appreciate all the love and support you give us on a daily basis. Now, let's get straight into this video. So, there has been news today on Aubameyang. There was news last night that a rumoured bid had gone out. Not sure how true it was. But today there has been meetings, so let's have a look at what's been said, and uh, we'll give you our thoughts. So, this is from Fabrizio from Romano. Pierre, em Pierre Aubameyang deal. Meeting in next hour is scheduled since last Sunday. Main focus will be on the personal terms. Length of contract and salary will be discussed today with Chelsea. Right after, Chelsea will prepare their first official bid to Barcelona. So, Aubameyang. Finally, a striker. Finally. Been waiting for this for months. Since Lukaku. Since we had to put up with that crap. Aubameyang. He's worked with Tuchel before, as we said. 70, 79 goals for Tuchel at Dortmund. You know, when, he, mm. when, when Aubameyang was working with Tuchel at Dortmund, he scored 79 goals. And I think it was in two seasons, two or three seasons. Yeah. Something like that. And I'll tell you something about Aubameyang now. He knows Tuchel. And Tuchel knows Aubameyang. That style. That, that fast, fluid football that Aubameyang likes to play. Alongside Tuchel. It's a match made in heaven. It's a match made in heaven for that. For, for Aubameyang and for Tuchel. And for Chelsea. Dad. You give your thoughts. Because Aubameyang is exciting. You know, he's quick. He's he's full of energy. You know, he's a good player. Your yeah. thoughts? Yeah, I think Aubameyang is a very uh, great player. You know, he's got a lot of pace. He's strong. Um, he's a superb goal scorer. You know, his record at um, Barcelona and his record, you know, in Dortmund, you know, they, they speak volumes. Um, and you know, just looking at him, you know, uh, when he was playing for Arsenal, you know, absolutely outstanding. Um, I think we could do with a Bamiyang. Uh, you know, two or three years left in him at the most. Um, but we do need as well a permanent striker. Yes, and this is a problem we have at the moment. Um, we, we seem to be lacking in the striker departments in terms mm -hmm. of. We don't have an out and out goal scorer. We've got Kai Havertz up front at the moment. And we've got Amanda Brosha, who we haven't seen much of yet. I would like him, I'd like to see more of him from mm. Tuchel. I'd like to see Tuchel get mm. him on the pitch more and get him, yeah. you know, into the team. But we need a striker who is ready mm. here and now. We don't need someone who is ready in three years' time or a year's time. We need someone now, mm. right this minute, right this second, at, at the pre in the Premier League, mm. where we are fighting mm. right now. Four points. Yeah. We need it. We need a striker yeah. that's ready now. This, this is the problem, you know. You got your defenders, yeah. Your wingers, your midfielders, and no striker. You know, we've got a false nine, and you know the, the way I interpret this, it's like your full Sunday roast without the gravy. Mm, you know exactly. You know, you got your your Yorkie puddings. You got you got your your meat. You got your roasties. Yeah. You got everything, but no no gravy. And then Sunday dinner without gravy just doesn't taste nice. <clears throat> I should know. Yeah. I tried Sunday dinners without gravy and it's disgusting. It's grim. But for all you people who like gravy without sun, uh, Sunday dinners without your gravy, clear enough. That was just an example. Now we're but, on yeah. food. Moving <laughs> on. Moving on. Um, yeah, so we need a ban Miang and I think it will happen. I think a bit will come in the next 24 hours at least. Um... <clears throat> 
It was a bit rumoured, but I'm not sure how concrete that was. But let's let's just see what happens. I'm excited for it. Dad, you're excited for it. And we're going to go in and try and get a Bamiyang, I guess. But uh, moving on to after a Bamiyang. What happens after a Bamiyang? What happens when a Bamiyang leaves or he's not as efficient as he wants as he as he could be well telesport have given us this so let's go straight into this and then we'll give you our thoughts on this one chelsea want to push ahead with Aubameyang as stopgap before signing before next summer with nkuku and liao at, admired at stanford bridge and this is via mcgrath mike and at telefootball now I like the idea of this. They're two great players. I, As Eunice said in his video earlier, we've got Bundesliga PTSD because of Werner. I don't know if you saw it with Werner, but when he plays in Germany, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of space for, for attackers. For defenders, if, you, if you're a good enough defender in Germany and you know the system and you know how to defend, you're going to do okay. Now, it doesn't work like that in the Premier League for attackers. Defenders are in your face and are on you. Like they're grabbing you. Physically, as we saw the other day, by your hair. So... My concern for those, for Nkuku, is could he have the same problem as Werner? But Liao, he's a good player. A very good player. But we'll we'll consider that later of the time. Dad, your thoughts on Nkuku and Liao? Yeah, two exceptionally uh, good young players there. Um, but coming back to what you were saying, you know, um, using in reference uh, Werner. Uh, yeah, over in the Bundesliga, La Liga, etc., they are given space, mm. yes. Um, and our league, as I said previously, is the hardest league in the world. Yeah. Um, it's a full contact game. Um, and that's all over the board or all over the pitch. Um, yes, you know, they come from abroad and... You know, they've got a, a certain skill set, yeah, as opposed to our players. Um, but, you know, have you just said in the past, you know, the Farmers League, you know, things are a little bit slower there. They're not so tough. You know. So, yeah, it's a swings and roundabouts, mm. you know. And, yes, and Kuku is a good player. I've seen that in the Champions League. Every time I've mm. watched him, he, he's looked phenomenal. But this is the Premier League where things are tough and can get rough and can get aggressive and physically demanding. Are players from the Bundesliga going to be able to come over from there and adapt to what we do, to how we run in the Premier League, to how aggressive and how physically demanding it is week in, week out? Is that going to be a struggle for Nkuku if he did come? Same for Rafael Liao. Like, Rafael Liao is in, is in um, the Serie A, which is a little bit different. The defending is very good there. But would would, he, would they both find it difficult to adapt like Werner did? That's my one concern. And all depending on how we do, on how they do, I don't know. I, I, I like the idea of them. I think they're good players. But can they adapt to the Premier League quickly? That would be my issue. But we'll see. Because I, I don't even we don't even know if these are gonna happen yet. Because this is talk of for future windows, for next summer or the or the January transfer window. Whatever happens, we've just gotta wait and see. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm I'm excited by those two players every time I watch them, you know, whether it's in the Bundesliga or in the Champions League, or in the City Ah, I'm excited. I'm excited by them both. Um, moving on now to the final story of the day. 
Um, been, this has been driving me berserk. Wesley Fofana, is he coming or is he not? Well, Brendan Rodgers has had something to say. And Fabrizio Romano has posted it out. And this is what was said. We'll give you our thoughts after it. But let's have a look first. Wesley Fofana has not submitted a transfer request, Brendan Rodgers added. Leicester are fighting to keep Wesley while Chelsea are still on it. Personal terms are agreed between Fofana and Chelsea on a six-year deal. Now, I'm sick of this merry-go-round. Either get it done or don't. I know it's a bit, it's a massive amount of money, but my view is just get it done because I'm sick to death of it. Fafano is a world class defender or a future world class defender, and I think he would fit. So get it done. For my sake, for other Chelsea fans' sake, for the Premier League's sake, get it done. Get it over the line. Get it sorted, get Fafana in that Chelsea shirt, and let's roll. Because I'm sick to death of it. Because it's been going on, this has been lingering for weeks. Since after Kunde, this has been going on. Mm. But, we'll see. Uh, Dad, your thoughts on Fafana and what Brendan Rodgers has said? Uh, yeah, again, I think these are a lot of... Um my games tactics um you know there obviously is finance involved in it um it's, it's a bit like a cliffhanger you know um keeping you in suspense and mm. basically it, it's you know it's like a yo-yo up and down up and down shall i stay or shall i go you know um uh, you know what will happen well if it, if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't one thing is clear, though. If Fafana has agreed personal terms, he clearly wants to go. Mm. That surely means mm. a transfer request has been handed in mm -hmm. and Brendan Rodgers is just playing games because Leicester don't want to sell. They want mm. to get the highest feed possible. Mm. But I'm not, I, I want Fafana. Don't get me wrong. I want Fafana at the club. But come on, just hurry up. I'm sick of it. But, you know... It is what it is. Fafana is going to be great if he does join us. I, I, can't, I can't wait for that. Because then we've got a rock-solid defence. You know, if we think about it already, we've got Cucurella, Ben Chilwell, Kulu Valley, uh, Thiago Silva. We've got Trevor Chalaba, Aspilicueta. We've got Reese James. Yeah. To add Fafana to that... You know, this could come in right at the last minute. Yes, it could. But, uh, I but I'm just sick breath. of the dilly-dallying. Mm. It's like we're treading on eggshells. Just put your bid in. Get it done. Get out of there. But, exactly. sorry guys, my phone is going off again. But yeah, you know, uh, let's just see what happens with Fafana. Because it's just going to... It's going to carry on. It's, whether we like it or not, it's going to linger. It's going to carry on for a while. But, uh, guys, let us know all your thoughts into about yeah. today's topics that we've discussed. Let us know what you think about Aubameyang. Let us know what you think about the future signings of Christopher Nkuku and Rafael Liao. Let us know what your thoughts are in regards to Wesley Fofana and what Brendan Rodgers has said today. And before we end this video, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe... Turn the notification bell icon on to be notified when we upload. Do not forget to share this video and share it to your friends, your family, your uncle, your auntie, whoever. You know, get them to watch this video because we are trying to build the Talking Blues army, the Chelsea fan army. We want to be the biggest army of Chelsea fans in the world. Okay. We want to yeah. build an army of us. We want to see a community built on this channel. So make sure you share this video out with all your friends and your family. And uh, yeah... T guys, this is the end of the video now. Please take care and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.